Hi, I'm Steve Adubato. It is my pleasure to introduce, uh, once again, he joins us, uh, Dr. Shivendu Sen. He is Associate Program Director, Internal Medicine Residency at Raritan Bay Medical Center. Good to see you again, Doctor. Good to see you, too. We're here to talk about um, heroin, opiate addiction problem in uh, New Jersey and across this country, a uh, right. legislative effort going on in the state of New Jersey, and talk about where we are at progress. By the way, there's a poll, um, Fairleigh Dickinson University, their public mind poll. Right. <sighs> Tell me if I'm right on this. 91%. 9 out of 10 plus New Jersey residents believe that doctors should, in fact, be required to tell their patients about the addiction risks and the drugs that they prescribe. Right. And rarely do so many New Jerseyans agree on anything. Why do you think so many New Jerseyans agree on this? I think, uh, you know, we are realizing that uh, in the state of New Jersey, we are standing in isolation. If you look to the other states of the country, we have all, uh, they have all implemented those guidelines, uh, the mandate that physicians need to inform uh, the patients about the adverse effects of this a highly mandate a mandate that physicians are required to say that again to, uh, physicians are required to apprise or inform their patients about the adverse effects of this highly controlled substances right now in new jersey they are not they are not the legislative effort is in place to try to do that yes it's the public supports that the public overwhelmingly supports that Go ahead. So, um, so obviously there is something fundamentally wrong that we are doing i mean forget about the rest of the world we uh, we uh, address pain management in a totally different way. But the other states in the country have been uh, very strong in the implementation. So I think uh, time has come for us. And a good number of physicians, we think that we do need those guidelines which are firm, decisive, uh, scientific. Uh, unfortunately, some, uh, th there's another school of thought where some physicians uh, would think that uh, the time has not come or uh, the physicians should be given the liberty Mm -hmm. to prescribe the medications at their own discretion. So this is a very sad crossroad that we are, we are in. But I think we are forgetting the fundamental point. The quintessential point here is we are dealing with a pain medication which has the capability to take off your pain, but it also carries the potential to take off your life. So uh, we, we have to understand that this is a, a very controlled substance. It cannot be prescribed like this. So we got to follow. The, the mandate of the people. We can't go against the voice of New Jersey. And we got to get these guidelines in. I want to be clear on a couple things. Um, when the doctor makes reference to some voices against this, um, the Medical Society of New Jersey, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, has taken a position on this. Right. They are against the mandate. We asked the Medical Society to participate in this discussion. Um, my producers have told me that they have opted not to participate. We will ask them again on our sister program. Uh, my colleague and I, Rafael Puerman, we will ask them to join us to come on and explain their point of view. But they have said no, that they do not support the mandate. And you're saying that the majority of states do have a mandate. They do. You are saying 91%, as you just said, in this FDU, Absolutely. Fairleigh Dickinson University public mind poll, most New Jerseyans support it. Right. The will of the people. Right. What would be the legitimate argument, and do you believe there is a legitimate argument, not to have this mandate? It's a very sad crossroad. We have... Uh, Why do you keep calling it a crossroad? The crossroad, I mean, most of the states, they have, you know, come out of this crossroad. There is no friction. Unfortunately, in the state of New Jersey, we have this. It's a mindset issue. What is it in New Jersey? What is it about New Jersey? A couple of things. It could be nonchalance. We just don't care. We are, we, or it could be just we are not looking around to see the standard of care outside. What amazes me here is, for any other diseases, we are in a world of evidence-based medicine, where whatever we do, we just don't do it out of our own choice. There are certain guidelines. For example, if I have a stroke, I can't just come and give a medication. There is a window period. So if you come within that window period, let's say three to three and a half hours, I can give those medications. If you're outside the window period, I won't give those medications. So we are obedient. We are obedient There's to those guidelines. It's a standard practice. It's a standard practice. So what amazes me is that why we would take an exception when it comes to a situation like this, which has become a crisis, which has become an epidemic. We should not be looking for any exceptions here. We should have guidelines, and we should follow them. What is the prescription monitoring program, and why is it relevant to this discussion? Prescription monitoring program is basically a central database. It presents with all the facts and figures. And, and 
And that's it. I mean, it's all about visibility. It's all about transparency. It is not a punitive measure. It's an educational tool. How does it work? What it does is that it entails a physician to take a look into it and see how many prescriptions have been prescribed, hmm. whether that particular patient, and again, we are not trying to profile anyone, but whether that particular patient has gone to another physician asking for the same pills. So that better prepares the physician, right? That better prepares the pharmacist. So the mandate that we have, let's say the state of New York now, they have a mandate that you have to access the PMP to see all those data information before you decide to give this particular prescription. I think it's a very fair thing to do. And we need to have a positive approach here. For example, the, the common criticism that we get is that doctors don't have time. Doctors don't have time to be checking the prescription monitor through the prescri prescription monitoring program. What other physician may have approved of this particular um, medication, this prescription drug for this patient? I don't have time to do that, you say? This is what we say. We have to have a proactive attitude. I'll get, take the example of New York. What they have done is that the IT department stepped them. So they stepped in and they upgraded the computer system. They upgraded it to what we call as an iStop, the internet system tracking of prescribed acts, where you do not have to go through those multiple clicks. One or two clicks, and you're right there in the final. You can find out immediately? Immediately. Who this patient has gotten prescription drugs from? Right. And then make a, dec a decision as to whether it's appropriate from a clinical point of view. Perfect. Is that correct? That's correct. And then th that's what New I Jersey say. doesn't have this. New Jersey doesn't have this. Because? And yet, because of this mindset that we are interfering with the freedom or the liberty of a physician, which, is, uh, which I think is a very retroactive statement. A couple of minutes left here. Sure. Physicians have a huge role to play here in terms of dealing with this, this heroin and opiate addiction. Right. The prescription drug problem, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. This is, this is a situation, as I said, which affects not only the person to whom the prescription is given. Everybody knows this. It introduces an addiction. It becomes the gateway to heroin addiction. And we are losing lives. Boys and girls in the state of New Jersey are, are dying. How serious is the problem? It is of paramount importance. And we got to all club together, everybody, physicians from the Senate, to the media, we all have to shake hands and put this epidemic to a dead end. There are 21 bills uh, in the state legislature right now trying to deal with the drug and opiate uh, crisis in the state. Uh, right. Um, through this program, through one-on-one, -on -one, our other program, but primarily through New Jersey Capital Report, we'll continue with my colleague Raphael Piorman to monitor this program. Again, we'll try to get the Medical Society of New Jersey to talk about uh, their position on this, but we'll continue with sure. uh, your colleagues, Dr. Sen and, and others, and through also members of the legislature who were involved in this effort to try to uh, track this. Thank you so much, Doctor. Thank you very much. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you very much. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence, and 13 for WNET, NJTV, and WHYY. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by activists in cooperation with the American Medicine Chess Challenge, Steve and Elaine Pozicki, NJIT, the Russell Berry Foundation, New Jersey Natural Gas, Berkeley College, and by TD Bank. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.